There's a movie I watched as a kid where one of the main characters says, Never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line. Well, today we're going to prove that not to be true because we're going to beat the Sicilian not once, not twice, but three times with opening traps that you can use in your games. Here we go. It's after E4, C5. I love the Sicilian Alapin, which is C3. And after D5, which is a good move, you can actually trade pawns and then play this move D4. It's a mistake for black to trade pawns either now or in the next couple of moves. Let's just say black trades right away. We're gonna take back with the pawn. We do have an isolated queen pawn, but the blockading piece is a queen. It's not good to have your queen as a blockader because after the trade, white can play knight c3 really quickly. That's why black is supposed to delay that trade. Let's just say black plays knight c6 to double attack this pawn. Then we're going to play this move knight f3 to defend. And if black plays this move bishop to g4, the first little mini trap that I want to teach you is you could play bishop to e2. And if black thinks that he or she is winning the pawn by taking, and then after takes taking, well, you have this in-between move bishop takes knight check, and when black takes your bishop back, nothing is guarding the queen. So that's a little mini trap, although not the main one that I wanted to show you. If we go back to this position, I love this move, knight to c3. And when the queen moves, let's give her a square. Queen a5 is pretty popular. We can now put this move d5, and black is already much worse. Because if black's knight goes backward, it's obviously not developed. And if black's knight comes to the square e5, this is the main trap. We're going to take and sack our queen because our knight was in an absolute pin. No, it wasn't. I was kidding with you. The knight was in a relative pin, which means we can give away our queen. This is one of those times. Then bishop check. And when the king moves, we can take this. Now we already have a piece and a pawn for the queen. And if the king moves out, there's actually several good ideas in this position. But I would definitely start with a check. And when the king keeps coming on a walk, it turns out almost any reasonable move here is good. You can take with the king, you can take with the rook, you can take this rook. I'm not going to advise any of those moves though. The number one move, maybe the simplest move, is for the knight to go back. That's right. We do not even take a rook that was totally trapped because by playing knight here, we have two really big ideas. Knight c4 would fork the king and the queen. And what could be better than winning the queen? Well, knight to d7 is actually a checkmate. So if this bishop tries to save itself, let's give it a safe square. Yeah, we're going to play knight to d7 mate. So in this position, white is at least getting the queen back with a chance for much more. Okay, let's take a look at our second Sicilian trap. This time, let's play knight f3, knight c6. Let's go into the open Sicilian, which can be kind of a dark, scary place, but not after today. Remember, we're going to beat the Sicilian really quickly. Let's say that black plays knight f6, and we play knight c3, and then black plays this move e5, sometimes known as the pelican, sometimes known as the Sveshnikov, whatever you want to call it, we're going to beat it. Knight on d to b5, and this knight wants to hop in to d6, so black fills in the hole. Now we can play this move knight to d5. We have two different knights that are headed for c7, and if either knight gets there, that would fork the king and the rook. So black usually takes, and when we take, black now has to move the knight. We're going to guard with our pawn, and here comes the trap. If black takes a look at this knight and says, hey, I've been watching Fun Master Mike's videos, and he told me to put up the no parking sign. Uh-oh. Wah, wah, wah. A6 is actually the mistake of the century, or at least the biggest mistake of the last five minutes, because now we play queen A4, which pins the pawn. If you take the knight, I win the rook, and I've won the exchange. The funny thing is black's position is so bad, the best move actually is to give away the rook and to take. The problem for black is that this knight is threatening not just double check, but double check mate. So if we just give black some kind of regular looking move, now here you get to pick your mate. Choose your own adventure. Knight takes pawn or knight c7. They're both double check mate. Now you might say, oh, I know what to do. We can just block with the queen. Well, that stops mate. But it does not stop knight takes pawn check because the queen is pinned. When the king moves over, we can then play knight takes this pawn check and fork the king and the rook. We'll eventually trade queens. We'll pick off that rook. And lastly, if black plays bishop to d7, well, now the queen is no longer defending. Now we do a smothered checkmate. So black is losing in all variations. Black could hang on by giving away the rook on a8, but in any case, you don't want to lose the exchange in the first 10 moves of the game. 
And in Sicilian trap number three, let's go back to the open Sicilian. Takes, takes. This time, we're going to have Black play the Accelerated Dragon with this move pawn to g6. Now, we call it Accelerated because Black never plays d6. And one of the drawbacks of playing g6 without playing d6 is that you don't have control over this square. Hmm. Why is that important? Well, thank you for not asking. I'm going to tell you anyway. We're going to take, take and play e5 because Black was not stopping us from playing that move. And knight to d5 is a pawn sacrifice, which, you know, black does get some compensation. But here comes the real trap. Take, take, queen takes. And in this position, when the rook moves to b8, there's a really neat idea. You know how we always say loose pieces drop off? Well, amazingly, take a look at both rooks. Neither one of them is defended. If only our queen could hmm. take our own pawn, we'd fork both rooks. I think you know what's coming next. White sacrifices this pawn on a square where it doesn't look like that pawn should have gone, but it's a clearance sacrifice. Now, nine times out of ten, black is going to take that pawn. And when black does take the pawn, we don't care which way. Then our queen goes to e5, and weirdly, somehow, we have forked the rooks. Looks like the wishbone trap, if you want to call it that. So those are three traps in the Sicilian defense. I think you feel more confident now playing against the opening. Good luck to you beating the Sicilian right out of the opening.